The Italian film genre, known as giallo, is named such because it comes from the murder mysteries published in the 30s and 40s in Italy that had these yellow covers, hence giallo, or jolly, when we're talking in the plural. And there's um, three films in particular, Don't Torture a Duckling, Who Saw Her Die, and What Have They Done with Solange? where there is a mistrust of religion. First of all, these films are what we would call proto-slashers. Mario Bava's film, The Girl Who Knew Too Much from the mid-60s, is considered the first giallo, and Dario Argento's Bird with the Crystal Plumage from 1970 is the film that really cements all the tropes that will carry on through the 70s and into the early 80s. But it wasn't until I read Michael McKenzie's thesis gender, genre, and socio-cultural change in the giallo that I realized what was going on, at least unconsciously, with the filmmakers who were creating these movies. What McKinsey does is he really dives in and shows us that although the protagonists of these films have this mistrust of the patriarchal system, that the giallo isn't necessarily rejecting tradition and embracing modernity. If anything, it's showing that these characters that run away from the crumbling patriarchal society of the 70s just run into the opposite direction and destruction follows. So McKinsey says if, if there is any single theme that is common across the entire Jalo cinema, it is that these films display a marked ambivalence towards modernity. The early 1970s was a period of marked change within Italian culture and society, stretching across the entire country, varying by region, but profound throughout. Modernity is not condemned in these films, but neither is it praised. The changes within Italian culture can be seen through the Giallo film as something to be discussed and debated. Issues pertaining to identity, sexuality, increasing levels of violence, women's control over their own lives and bodies, history, the state, all abstract ideas which are all portrayed as human stories in the Giallo film. McKinsey goes on to write, all of this cultivates an image of a well-traveled, cultured, and educated, but troubled and rootless individual who travels from place to place, dabbling in the arts, and soaking up local culture, experiencing la dolce vita as it were. But, as McKinsey goes on to demonstrate, deeply conflicted about his identity and his place within the world. So keep in mind, none of these jolly overtly talk about the changes that were happening in Italy. But at the same time, as is the case with what have they done with Solange, back alley abortions are part of the plot, part of... Um, why this killer is taking revenge. It doesn't take much, especially once you read McKinsey's thesis, to see that unconsciously the men who are writing these films, as well as the women actors they're collaborating with, are processing these rapid changes. So there's this long, prolonged period of liberation in Europe, but the Catholic Church still has tight control over the family. And when that finally crumbles, that freedom, that liberty that people all of a sudden have doesn't necessarily feel like freedom. And if anything, things are more confusing and terrifying than ever. Um, the rise of the separation of spouses that we see post the 50s. The introduction of the pill. And in Italy, divorce was legalized in 1970, which just so happens to be the year that Argento's Bird with the Crystal Plumage comes out. So seek out Lucio Fulci's Don't Torture a Duckling or Aldo Lado's Who Saw Her Die, and get, get a little taste of what was going on in the psyche of the Italian people as Catholicism decayed and sexual anxieties ran rampant. <laughs>